Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Aussie Fish Keeping. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at seven of the smallest algae eating fish that you can get for your aquarium. So all seven of these fish are relatively small, besides one in particular, which does get a little bit larger than the rest. But for the most part, I've tried to find seven of the smallest algae eating fish that are available. So all the fish on this list are relatively peaceful and they would go well in a community of aquarium although all of which do require their own specific set of needs and in today's video we're going to briefly go over what those needs are but without any further ado let's just jump straight into today's video with the first fish on our list so as for the first fish on our list today we have auto sinkless catfish so auto sinkless catfish are obviously a really small sucking mouth catfish, which does mean they do quite a good job at cleaning up all the algae in your aquarium. So a cool thing about these auto sinkless catfish is that there's actually many different species of them, although they are quite hard to tell apart. And a lot of the time, a bunch of different species are sold in the aquarium trade just because these guys are generally wild caught and not actually captive bred. So when these guys are in your aquarium, they will go after all sorts of soft surface algae. So a lot of the time, if you get green spot algae or all sorts of different like algae films growing on your glass, these guys will definitely eat that and they'll do quite a good job at it. So as for water parameters for these guys, they do best in an aquarium that is around 21 to 26 degrees Celsius. So that's obviously around 70 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit. So as for the pH for these guys, they do like it at around 6 to 7.5. So these guys do best in a planted aquarium with lots of hiding spots just because they are quite small and out in the wild they're preyed upon quite easily. So having hiding spots for them to go to when they feel stressed is always best. And then as for the tank size, anything around 30 to 40 liters is pretty good. And you're gonna wanna keep these guys in a school of around three to four fish. So out in the wild, they'll be in massive schools. So if you can replicate a small school in your aquarium, that's always best and it will promote all sorts of social behaviors. So having a tank that is around 30 to 40 liters will allow you to keep a few fish in there together. So as for their diet, they do obviously need things like algae wafers and obviously algae, but all sorts of Frozen foods, sinking pellets, and live blackworms are also really good staples in their diet. And then as for tank mates, these guys are relatively peaceful. So if you can find anything else to keep them with that's peaceful, like cherry shrimp or small tetras and rasporas, anything that's really peaceful and won't really mess with them too much is generally best. So yeah, the Otosynchus catfish is definitely a great fish if you are looking for some sort of small algae eater. Moving on to the next fish on our list, we have something that's not actually a fish, but it definitely is a great algae eater. We have cherry shrimp. So cherry shrimp are obviously a super cool little aquatic invertebrate and they do come in a variety of different colors. So not only can they be a super interesting colorful addition to your aquarium, but they can also help out a little bit when it comes to algae maintenance. So obviously these guys are quite small and they won't clean your whole tank overnight like some of the other fish would but they will definitely help long-term keeping the algae levels low. So if you are planning on getting these guys to help cut back your algae, it's always best to keep them in there for about a week and then clean off all the algae. And what they'll do is keep all the algae away when it starts to bloom again. So as for the algae these guys will tackle is any sorts of soft brown or green algae that they can get their little nippers on. So as for the water parameters for these guys, you can keep them unheated and anywhere around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius is best. And then as for the pH, anything from around 6.5 to 7.5 should be fine for these guys. So it is always best to keep cherry shrimp in a planted aquarium and it's always great to have some sort of botanicals like Indian almond leaves in there. So not only will they eat the biofilm that grows on this Indian almond leaf when it starts to decompose, but it also does provide really nice tannic acids into the water, which obviously provides all sorts of antibacterial and antifungal properties. So another great thing to keep these guys with is a sponge filter. So in these tanks behind me, I keep all of my cherry shrimp with sponge filters. And the reason for that is because it provides a great environment for all sorts of microorganisms to grow on. And these cherry shrimp will actually feed off those microorganisms. So it's just a super good little food source that you can add in there for them. And the final thing you do wanna remember is to keep these guys with some source of calcium. So if you've seen my videos before, I talk about this a lot when we are talking about cherry shrimp. 
And the reason you want to provide some sort of calcium is because it does help when they are molting, so it gives them a nice strong exoskeleton. And you can provide them with this calcium by putting in a piece of dried coral or cuddle bone. So as for the cherry shrimp diet, a lot of the time they can just feed off the things in your tank if it is a established aquarium. But it is also definitely important to feed these guys as well, so you can feed them all sorts of dry shrimp foods or algae wafers. Just anything that's gonna provide them with enough sustenance to keep going. And you can also get foods that do help make their colors pop a lot more if that's something you're into. So as for tank mates, these guys are quite defenseless. So any small fish with really small mouths, just because if you keep them with any big aggressive fish with larger mouths, obviously they will eat them quite easily. So I would recommend things like rasboras, small tetras, endlers, and other types of shrimp. You can even get away with keeping them with things like bristlenose, although you may find that every now and again, the bristlenose may actually eat one or two of them. But if you do have a super small aquarium and you wanna help keep the algae down, I would highly recommend cherry shrimp. So on to our next fish we have a fish that resembles a mini stingray we have Borneo suckers so like I just said these guys are shaped like a miniature stingray and they are a super unique fish that you can add to your aquarium so not only are they a really cool looking fish but they also do help a lot with your algae and they are quite good at eating the algae so these guys will eat any sort of soft algaes or algae films that grow in your aquarium so all sorts of surface algae so as for water parameters for these guys you do want to keep them in a heated aquarium at around 20 to 25 degrees celsius which is around 72 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And then as for the pH, anything from around 6.5 to 7.5 should be good for these guys. So obviously algae is a big part of their diet, so you can feed them all sorts of algae wafers or sinking algae wafers or things like that, as well as live black worms and all sorts of frozen foods, just anything that sinks to the bottom of the aquarium, just because although these guys will go up on your glass, they won't really free swim in the middle of your aquarium. So when they are feeding, they will be around the bottom of your aquarium a lot of the time. So the perfect tank setting for these guys would be some sort of planted aquarium with soft substrate and good filtration. As well as that, you do want soft surfaces in your aquarium just because these guys like to suck to all sorts of surfaces in your aquarium. So if you do have sharp surfaces, they can cut your fins a lot. No, they can cut their fins a lot. So as for tank mates for these guys, any sort of peaceful fish like tetras, barbs, rasboras, danios, live berries, anything like that would go best with them. But yeah, with that being said, I definitely think that Borneo suckers are another great small algae eating fish that you can get for your aquarium. Moving on to the next fish on the list, we have the fish that I was talking about earlier in the video that does get a little bit bigger than the rest. We have Siamese algae eaters. So Siamese algae eaters or SAEs are a really popular algae eating aquarium fish and they are readily available in the aquarium hobby. So these guys will actually eat a wide variety of different algae, and a lot of the time you, they can actually help with eating things like blackbeard or hair algae and they will also obviously eat things like surface algae as well. As for the water parameters for these guys, anything from around 20 to 27 degrees Celsius, which is around 72 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. And as for the pH, anything around 6.5 to 7.5 should be good for them. So because these guys do get a lot larger, you do want a water volume of around 100 liters, which I believe is like 26 gallons or something like that. And another good thing to provide with these guys is a lot of plants and a soft substrate. Now this isn't really vital, but the soft substrate does help a little bit because they do have a sucking mouth. If they are just going over coarse gravel all the time, that can obviously cause little cuts which can get infected. But I wouldn't worry about that too much. It doesn't happen too often, but it's just something to keep in the back of your mind if you are planning on getting these guys. And then as for tank mates, they are relatively peaceful themselves, so they can actually be kept with a lot larger fish than the other fish on this list. So you can keep them with things like loaches, obviously denios, barbs, tetras, all sorts of fish like that they would go great with. But yeah, the Siamese algae eating fish is a great, not so small, algae eating fish that you can get for your aquarium. So moving on to the next fish on our list, we have another shrimp. We have algae eating shrimp. So there is a wide variety of different algae eating shrimp out there. You can get all sorts of Australian native algae eating shrimp. You can get Amano shrimp, all sorts of things like that. But if I was to point out every specific species, this video would go on for hours and hours. So I've just sort of put them into one conglomerate group of algae eating shrimp. It's hard to put down the specific needs of each. So I've kind of just like tried to made up a general like care guide of them all. 
So obviously, as the name suggests, these shrimp are very good at eating algae and they will eat all sorts of hair algaes and surface algaes and things like that. So that will actually be a staple in their diet, but you also want to provide them with shrimp, sinking shrimp pellets and like all sorts of algae pellets and things like that just to supplement them. But these guys don't need any sort of meat in their diet at all, so as long as it's algae or plant-based, that should be good for them. As for water parameters for these guys, anything of around 20 to 26 degrees Celsius is best, and that's obviously around 68 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit. And then as for the pH, anything of around 6.5 to 7.5 will be best for these guys. So as for the perfect tank setting, obviously a planted aquarium would be best with a sponge filter. So just like the cherry shrimp, this does provide a microbiome for all sorts of microorganisms to grow on, which the shrimp will feed off. And then as for the tank size, anything of around 20 to 30 liters will do. Obviously it does depend what species you get, but most of the time they are all relatively small and they don't really grow much over four to five centimeters. So as for tank mates, obviously any sort of peaceful fish like rasboras or small tetras, even endlers and other shrimp would be best. But with that being said, I definitely think that algae eating shrimp as a whole are great little algae eating fish that you can get for your aquarium. So as for the next fish on our list, we actually don't have a fish again, we have a mollusk. And I think by saying that a lot of you would already guess what it is, we have snails. So snails can be quite a pesky little thing to have in your aquarium, although if you do get certain species that don't breed as much, then you can actually have quite a lot of success with them helping you cut down your algae levels. So some species I would steer clear from are things like ramshorn snails, Malaysian trumpet snails, and obviously bladder snails. These three can become pests in your aquarium quite quickly just because they do breed like rabbits. And some snails I would recommend are things like mystery snails, rabbit snails, um, and neurite snails. Now I'm not fully against having ramshorn snails, I have a few behind me here and I've got the blue ramshorn snails. So you can get quite a few cool little colours, so you can get blue ramshorns, you can get blue leopards, ivory, all sorts of cool coloured ramshorn snails. So if you do want to get a colour variant like that that's a lot more interesting to have, then I would recommend doing that instead of just going for your red or brown ramshorn snails. But anyway, as for the snails themselves, they can tackle all sorts of surface algaes and they actually do quite well at it. So as for the water parameters, it doesn't really matter at all. As long as the pH is between six and eight, you should find these guys thrive. And as for the heating, it doesn't matter. You can keep them outside in a completely unheated setup and they will still do fine. So as for the tank setting, you do want good filtration on this tank just because these guys do produce a lot of waste just because they're constantly eating. So having some good filtration is vital and it's always good to throw some plants in there as well, particularly if you are wanting to try and breed them. So as for diet, these guys can probably sustain themselves quite well in an established aquarium. But if you do want to provide them with some sort of food source, I would recommend things like zucchini, green beans, or even just an algae wafer. And then as for tank mates, anything that's really quite peaceful. There's not too many fish that will eat snails out there. I do have a video if you are wanting to get rid of your snails about snail eating fish, and I'll leave that linked in the description. So obviously you don't want to choose anything on that list just because they will eat your snails but yeah if you are looking for a super cool small little creature to keep in your aquarium to help you cut back your algae i would highly recommend snails okay so moving on to the final fish on our list we have one that's really similar to the borneo sucker we have hillstream loaches so hillstream loaches can be a little bit more difficult to come by here in australia particularly but nonetheless they are a great algae eating fish and if you can get your hands on them i would highly recommend doing so so these guys will eat all sorts of soft surface algaes much like the borneo suckers and they will do a very good job at it as well as for water parameters anything from around 20 to 24 degrees celsius is good for these guys and that's obviously around 68 to 74 degrees fahrenheit and then as for your ph just a general 6.5 to 7.5 is best so if you want to set up a perfect tank for these guys, I would highly recommend using a high lighting, high flow, clean water and smooth stone setup. So what I mean by that is putting a bunch of smooth rocks and stones in your aquarium and having a flow over them. Just because where these guys come from in the wild, they do come from streams, as the name suggests, hill stream. So because of this fast moving water, it's also good to have some sort of really high oxygenation. So even having a filter and an air stone in there is best. 
just because with a lot of fast moving water, obviously there's a lot of oxygen getting put in the water in their natural environment. So if you can try and replicate that, that's obviously best. So as for diet, any sorts of frozen foods, algae wafers or dry foods like that is best for them. And then as for tank mates, obviously anything that can withstand that fast flow as well as any sort of peaceful fish that won't bother them too much. But with that being said, that is the final fish on our list and that is gonna bring us to the end of today's video. So I hope you all enjoyed and I hope I helped you guys find a brand new small algae eating fish that you can get to help you keep your algae levels down in your aquarium. If you did enjoy today's video and you haven't done so already, please make sure to go down, smash the like button and subscribe. And while you're down there, leave your thoughts on today's video. I always love going down there and reading all the comments. I try to reply back to as many as I can. But yeah, with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all in that next video.